Dear learners, welcome to our NPTEL course on Science Communication, Research Productivity and Data Analytics using open source software. Now, we have covered science, science communication, it is important, why do we need different metrics and bibliometrics and its application. Now we are moving to scientometrics. Scientometrics is basically a subset of bibliometrics. Scientometrics is a branch of bibliometrics that focus especially on quantitative analysis of science and scientific research. As Pritchard said in bibliometrics, it is the matrix of books and other form of science communication. Here in scientometrics basically it is focus on quantitative analysis of science and scientific research. Hence when we are discussing about scientometrics we are basically dealing with science and scientific research. Scientometrics involved different bibliometric methods to study the various aspects of scientific interaction to various aspects of scientific literature including its publication, citation, authors, journals and institutions. That means, when we are discussing about scientometrics, scientometrics is basically applying bibliometric methods in study the various domains of scientific literature and those domains may include the different science publication or citation or the author profile, the journal profile or the institution profile. The goal of scientometrics is to measure and evaluate the productivity, impact and dynamics of scientific research. Why do we need scientometrics? Scientometrics is needed to evaluate the impact of science is needed to measure the dynamics of science, is needed to measure the productivity of science. Hence, when we say about scientometrics, scientometrics is basically measure the science productivity, is measure the impact and is measure the dynamics of science. Scientometrics provide quantitative insight into the structure, evolution and impact of scientific research. It provides how the science is evolved. When you say about scientometrics, it is a measuring of science, how science is evolved, what is the structure of science and what is the impact of scientific research on the society. These are basically the areas which we cover when we uh, using scientometrics. Scientometrics is very much required for research productivity, is very much required to quantitatively to analyze the research productivity quantitatively is very much required for evaluating and influencing the scientific work. What the scientific work is influencing our society, what is the influence of that work on other domain of science, this is a goal of scientometrics. That means, when we are dealing with scientometrics, we are trying to find out what is the influence of research A 
on research B and vice versa and it support evidence based decision making in academia, funding agency and government institution. As I discuss in bibliometrics, bibliometrics is very much essential for funders, is very much essential for the policy maker, for the planner. Similarly, scientometrics is very much required for evidence based decision making by the government, by the funding agency, by the research organizations. I am going to cover Lothkaj inverse law of scientific productivity. When we are discussing about scientific laws, there are three prominent laws of scientometrics. The first is Lothka inverse square law of productivity, second is Bradford's law of scattering of scientific paper and the third one is Jeff's law of word occurrence. Let us discuss Lothka's inverse square law of productivity. Lothka inverse square law of productivity is named after Alfred J. Lothka and this is perhaps the first scientometrics or infometrics law. Lothka proposed inverse square law in 1926 which correlates contributor of scientific paper with their contribution. Hence, the basic concept of Lothka law which is produced by Lothka in 1926 is the number of contributions made by contributor. That means, the number of contribution made by an author. Lothka observed that the number of authors producing a certain number of publication follows a mathematical pattern. While proposing this law, Lothka come to know that the number of contribution made by a particular author, there is some mathematical pattern and what he did for obtaining the data, Lothka used, he count the number of personal names in the 1907 to 1916 decennial index of chemical abstract. What Lothka did? Lothka took the decennial that means 10 year index of chemical abstract of uh, 1907 to 1916. He took the alphabet A and B of that particular index and he counted the number of publication. He listed the number of publication against the alphabet A and B, 1, 2, 3, 4 like that. He treated letter A and letter B both separately and in aggregate. And while formulating this law, Lothka omitted the name of firms. That means, he took chemical abstract of 10 year of 1907 to 1916, took the alphabet A and B and counted down the listed publication under the alphabet A and B. This was one source. Another source, he took the index in Felix Aurobes of physics and the basic reason for taking this what Lotka explained is that it covers the entire range of history of physics through 1900 and it is a quality source which only took account 
not only the volume of production but also quality because it listed only the outstanding contribution in PGX. That means while the first source the chemical abstract he took just 10 year index and took the alphabet A and B, but in his second source that is Orobas, Lothka took the complete source starting from the 1900 and the region behind taking this because it publishes it was an authentic source for history of physics and listed only the quality contribution. And uh, while making this count, while counting Lothka only credited the senior author in joint publication. If a publication having two or more than two author, Lothka only took the senior author while proposing his law while counting his uh, number of publication against the author. Now, on logarithmic table a scale, on logarithmic scale, he plotted the number of authors against their contribution. Because he has taken the author and the contribution, he already counted the author and contribution using chemical abstract and abacus physics. And now, he plotted the number of authors against their contribution. He found that in each case, the points are rather closely scattered about an essentially a straight line having a slope of 2 to 1. He draw on logarithmic scale, he draw a, a straight line. He draw a straight line like that in logarithmic scale and he found that the point is very close to this straight line which having the slope of 2 to 1. The approach of this ratio is particularly close in case of data taken from Auerbach table. The Auerbach table is quite close to the straight line as compared to chemical abstract data. Now, the general formula Lothka found that there is a relationship exists between the frequency y of a person making x contribution. There is a relationship between the person and the contribution and that relationship is x to the power n y is equal to constant. Let us see this constant is c. That means, when Lothka found out, analyzed the result found from the chemical abstract and abacap physics, he came to know that there is relationship exist between frequency y of person making x contribution and the formula for that relationship is x to the power n y is equal to constant. On the basis of this data, Lothka derived what a law and this is termed as the inverse square law of scientific productivity. Inverse square law correlates contributor of scientific paper with their contribution. It says what is the relationship between the number of papers produced by a contributor and that relationship is governed by x to the power n y is equal to constant. For the special case n is equal to 2 that is inverse square law of scientific productivity, the value we can find the value of constant as you see. We have already seen that here x to the power n y is equal to c, x to the power n y is equal to c. If you are taking this one as y 1, then y 1 is equal to c by 1 square 
similarly y2 is equal to c by 2 a square y3 is equal to c by 3 a square and so on now if you are adding all this that means uh, is a sigma 1 to infinity y is equal to you are taking c outside it's 1 by 1 square plus 1 by 2 a square plus 1 by 3 a square plus dash 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 it's like that now this one is equal to c and this is sigma 1 by 1 square plus 1 by 2 square plus 1 by 3 square is sigma 1 to infinity 1 by x square. That is equal to c pi square by 6 and pi a square c pi a square by 6. Hence, for c it would be for c it would be 6 by pi a square sigma 1 to infinity y. Since here the y is frequency and uh, the summation of this frequency gives unity hence then we get c is equal to 6 by pi a square we know the value of pi is equal to 3 point value of pi pi is equal to 3.14 if we put the value of pi here then we get the value of c as 0 0.60 approximately so that means we are getting the constant the value of constant here that is 0 0.0 0 0.60 so that is approximately 60 percent is a 60 percent that means what lothka propose here that the proportion of all contributors who contribute a single item should be just over 60 percent that what lothka want to wants to say Lothka want to say that if we have the group of authors, then in that group, 60 percent of the author will contribute single contribution. 60 percent of author will have only one article in their account that Lothka proposed here. In the case he examined for the chemical abstract and the Abweger physics, the actual proportion of this class was 59.2 percent in Auerbach data and 57.7 percent in chemical F in 57.7 percent in chemical abstract data under initial letter A and 57.9 percent in initial letter B and 57.9 percent under A and B jointly. That means what we are observing here that is approximately 60 percent what we have found here the value of constant. That means 60 percent approximately 60 percent author will have single contribution. Now, he found that if you take the total number of authors who have published only one article, then the number of authors who have published k article would approximately be 1 by k square times as the number of times the number of authors who have published only one article. What Lothka observed? Lothka observed that if we take the total number of authors who have published only one article, then the number of authors who have published k article would be 1 by k square times of number of authors who have published one article. For the example, let us see if an author 
पब्लिश टू आर्टिकल्स टू आर्टिकल्स देन द नंबर ऑफ ऑथर्स पब्लिश टू आर्टिकल्स वुड बी वन बाई टू स्क्वायर टाइम्स वन बाई टू स्क्वायर टाइम्स डेट मीन्स वन बाई फोर टाइम्स the number of authors publics two article would be 1 by 4 times of the number of authors published one article this is basically what lothka proposed in simpler term we can say that the number of authors who have published two article is approximately 1/4 of the number of authors published one article the number of authors published three articles would be 1/9th 1 by 3 square that is 1/9th of the authors who have published one article the number of authors for published four article would be 1 by 16 and so on hence this number of author making n contribution would be 1 by n square times the number of authors who have published one article in very clear that the number of authors public n article would be 1 by n square times the number of authors published one article for the example as i told in my previous slide the number of authors published two articles would be 1 by 4th the number of authors public one article three article would be 1 by 9th and so on the proportion of all contributor who make single article is about 60% and this law is known as lothka inverse law of scientific productivity that means when we talk about lothka's inverse law of scientific productivity we see that most of the author publish one article in their lifetime and very less number of author contribute most number of article that means a very few authors are prominent in that particular field of uh, study who are contributing for the development of that field this is lothka uh, inverse law of scientific productivity this is the graph which uh, lothka originally published when he published his article in journal of uh, washington academic of science on june 1926 you see here this is the fully drawn line and this is the dash line this fully drawn line is basically indicates the point given by inverse square law now as i mentioned that uh, lotka evaluated uh, two sources one is arabex and the other was chemical abstract for later a and b in arabex this crossed you see all this cross basically this cross this cross are for the arabex physic and this circle this particular you see this particular circle are for chemical abstract what are you finding it here that means in case of uh, arabex the cross is very much near to this uh, fully drawn line while this one in case of chemical abstract these circles are very near to the dashed line that means when we are drawing a graph on logarithmic table using the data derived by lothka then we come to know they are quite close to the exponential line having slope of 2 by 
दिस इज बेसिकली लोथकाज इनवर्स लॉ ऑफ साइंटिफिक प्रोडक्टिविटी विच इज वेरी मच एसेंशियल फॉर ग्रोथ एंड डेवलपमेंट ऑफ साइंस एंड विच प्रेडिक्ट द हाउ साइंस इज मूविंग हु इज द मोस्ट प्रोलिक ऑथर हु आर द ऑथर हु आर कंट्रीब्यूटिंग इन 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 साइंस नाउ इफ यू सी द वेरियस एप्लीकेशन ऑफ लोथखा लॉ लोथखा लॉ कैन बी यूज फॉर रिसर्च इवेल्युएशन लोथखा लॉ कैन बी यूज फॉर इवेल्युएटिंग रिसर्च प्रोडक्टिविटी एंड आइडेंटिफाइंग द हाईली प्रोडक्टिव ऑथर्स बिकॉज we have already seen that some of the author are contributing the maximum number of article in a particular domain of science with the help of lothka law we come to know who they author are and how they are contributing in science productivity lothka law can be used for authorship analysis we can analyze we can understand the authorship pattern in that particular branch of science using lothka law in scientific publication how that particular scientific publication are happening who are the most eminent author who are the scientist who are the researcher who contributing for the development of uh, the domain can be found out using lothka law lothka law can be used for the resource allocation is help in taking the logical decision for the allocating of the resources because based on the lothka law we can find out the author productivity and by that way it possible to take the decision on allocating of resources lothka law gives the research trends and the research pattern with the help of lothka law we can find out the most prolific author the most contributing author and by that way we can find out in which particular domain that particular author is working with by that way we can find the research trend and pattern in that particular domain lothka law can be used for the career man development is used for the mentoring because lothka law find out the productivity of the author and based on that we can find who are the most eminent author to whom we need to pay attention it provide the insight of the career development and the mentorship program hence lothka law can be used for the career development and the mentorship lothka law can also be used for the publication strategy lothka law can guide publication strategy for the researcher they understand the distribution of the author productivity and can set the realistic goal you see every discipline is unique it not necessary that discipline a is contributing more so that discipline b in science they having their unique characteristics they having their unique feature with the help of lothka law a budding author can find out can derive their derive his or her strategy and work on that he or she can fix a realistic goal based on the development of that particular domain which can be achieved by him or her in next 15 or 20 years of time lothka law is used for the bibliometric studies like we have already covered that uh, so is is uh, bibliometric study like authorship pattern with the help of lothka law we can come to know about the authorship pattern we can come to know about the production which are most productive field 
we can uh, come to know about the productivity distribution, uh, we come to know about the collaborative network, all these are possible with uh, the help of Lothka law and Lothka law can be used in this uh, category. Lothka law is very much uh, essential for the management of library and information centers. Library and information management, Lothka law helps in management of uh, library and information. This can be applied to analyze the productivity of authors in academic library and information management. And this can be useful for the librarians and information specialists in research allocation and the collection management. You see, we know that with the help of Lothka law, we can we can easily find out uh, the author profile. We can easily find out how the author are performing in particular domain of uh, research, in particular domain of science. Hence, uh, the library information science professional use Lothka law in their collection development. Use Lothka law in the resource allocation, use Lothka law in guiding the institution to adopt different uh, development field where the further study can be done. Lothka law can also be used for making a good information storage and retrieval system because a good information and storage and retrieval system is very much required to retrieve the stored information pre precisely and is very much required for uh, getting the required information in the right uh, time in the in, in the right way and the lothka law can be used for the search engine by understanding the distribution of authorship and improving the ranking of search result you see a good storage and information system is that which give you the maximum precise result with minimum time. And for that Lothka law can be used for improving the search result, Lothka law can be used for ranking the search result by that way it would helpful in making or in designing a good information storage and retrieval system. There are some limitations of Lothka law also because uh, we have already seen that Lothka consulted uh, two sources and uh, these two sources uh, having one was chemical abstract other was the uh, is a qualitative based physics literature. In first there was 10 year index covered only letter A and B, in the second he covered the history of physics uh, without any, any restriction on the letter. Hence for Lothka law single source in a limited time frame may not produce favorable result. It is important because I have already told you in the beginning of my lecture that science is ever growing, science is dynamic, science is expanding. Hence, if we are taking any source for a limited period of time for one year, two year, then the result which we obtain will not favor Lothka law. If you are taking a single publication, for a given journal then the Lothka law, it, 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 it might be possible that Lothka law will not be true or correct, it will not follow the Lothka law. Data compiled from a comprehensive source in order to capture true representation of author publication using either quality or quantity, uh, quantity as a selection criteria. Lothka law is valid when we are considering various comprehensive data for a longer period of time then the Lothka law can be true or it can be uh, it can give true result. Another limitation of Lothka law is assumption of stability. 
लोथ का लो एज्यूम ए स्टेबल सिस्टम ओवर टाइम यू सी वेन लोथ का प्रपोज ही लॉ इन नाइनटीन ट्वेंटी सिक्स बेसिकली ही टुक केमिकल एबस्टेक टेन ईयर डेटा द अनदर फिजिक्स सोर्स हैविंग द डेटा फ्रॉम द नाइनटीन हंड्रेड ऑन वर्ड्स बट साइंस इज डायनेमिक हैंस ही एज्यूम द एस्टेबिलिटी ऑफ साइंस बेसिकली लोथ का एज्यूम अ एस्टेबल सिस्टम ओवर टाइम बट दैट सिस्टम इज नॉट स्टेबल इफ यू आर टेकिंग द डेटा ऑफ नाइनटीन हंड्रेड सेवन टू नाइनटीन हंड्रेड सिक्सटीन ऑफ केमिकल एबस्ट्रैक्ट टूडे इट नॉट नेसेसरी डेट वॉट एवर प्रोड्यूस हंड्रेड ईयर बैक वुड बी ट्रू दिस टाइम ऑल्सो दैट मीन्स वी कांट एज्यूम एस्टेबिलिटी इन केस ऑफ साइंस बिकॉज इज डेवलपिंग एरिया हैंस विदाउट टेकिंग एस्टेबिलिटी विदाउट एज्यूमिंग एस्टेबिलिटी वी कैन गो फॉर द लोथा लॉ बट लोथा लॉ वेन यू प्रपोज ही एज्यूम द एस्टेबिलिटी बिकॉज यू टूक द डेटा ऑफ लिमिटेड पीरियड लोथ का लॉ इज बेसिकली अ लीनियर मॉडल इज बेस्ड ऑन द पावर लॉ रिलेशनशिप एज्यूमिंग अ लीनियर मॉडल फॉर द डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ साइंटिफिक प्रोडक्टिविटी दिस में ओवर सिंप्लीफाई द कॉम्प्लेक्स नेचर ऑफ साइंटिफिक प्रोडक्टिविटी यू सी लोथ का मल्ली काउंटेड द नंबर ऑफ पब्लिकेशन अगेंस्ट द कंट्रीब्यूटर हाउ मेनी आर्टिकल इज पब्लिश बाई अ पर्टिकुलर कंट्रीब्यूटर बट साइंस द नेचर ऑफ साइंस इज समथिंग कॉम्प्लेक्स इज नॉट ओनली लिमिटेड टू द पब्लिकेशन नंबर ऑफ पब्लिकेशन बाई अ पर्टिकुलर ऑथर ए और बी हैंस वट एवर द मॉडल प्रपोज बाई लोथ का इज समथिंग विच इज वेरी मच लीनियर इन नेचर and uh, this was one of the limitation uh, he met uh, it so over simplified uh, that uh, he didn't consider the complex nature of science while proposing this model so this was one of the limitation of uh, lotha law there is another limitation of lotha law and that is the dependence on data quality the law highly depends on the accuracy and the quality of data so obtained incomplete or uh, inaccurate data give the false gives the fal false result of lotka law hence it is quite dependent on data quality and basically it's the uh, static analysis because the law is more suited for uh, static analysis instead of the dynamic analysis because it doesn't capture all the changing mode of science communication thanks for your patience hearing thank you